today to do a review of a board game, and a board game that is big. What do I mean by big? Do I mean popular? Well, no, I have no particular reason to believe that it's a craze in the youth clubs up and down the land, but no, I mean more in the sense of physically big. Well, let me show you. This, this is just the basic game, okay? This, it's, it's pretty heavy, pretty large box, as you can see, and this is what you need to play the basic game. Just listen to it. There's the main board, there's a quarter of the board, and there's another quarter of the board, and you've got a rule book. Look at the size of that, huh? And you've got various, very stout bits of card to uh, play with. Uh, admittedly, the scoreboard itself, for some reason, the scoreboard is some reason is like flimsy, but everything else is stout. More stout bits of card. And look at the number of figures! <laughs> so that's the basic game. Then you've got the Urijava Empire's game. And that, and again, nicely fitting, um, nicely fitting lid. I do like a reasonably well fitted lid and inside uh, this one uh, you've got more figures some of which are big figures look at it and I've got big hands you've got bear with it you've got extra boards for uh, the uh, six to eight player uh, version of the game or is that five to eight um, so you can have more players, and uh, on the back of the, the vital uh, uh, pieces of, of board you need to, to understand your particular role in the game, you have gratuitous art that will almost never be seen, because it's always that way up on the table. <laughs> then you've got these boxes. Now these ones, you see, these ones are, are light and airy. Um, they were apparently going to be a small number of these expansions, but you can see there's an awful lot of air in this box, and these ones are, this one's the Cosmic Monsters, you've got more big gribbly things that uh, you can play with. And you've got another one which is Dragons, and you've got another one which is Chaos Monsters, I'll show you more details later, and then you've got Elder Races, and the Elder Races is possibly the most interesting expansion in that you've got loads of figures, loads of little figures with Dragon Newts and and uh, there's a giant there, and, and you've got a, an archer with no head and three arms. Brilliant. And, uh, and you've got guys on really big bases. And, um, and yeah, so, and you can ally these in the game, and because they can be uh, anyone's friend, they're beige. This is a lot of game. Uh, could it be possible it's too much game? <laughs> How does an ordinary table cope with this? Well, I've measured it, and this one is six foot eight by three foot eight, and we'll see what things look like when they're laid out. <laughs> Phew! Right, and here we have the game set up. Uh, well, almost. Uh, that needs to be there, and uh, that needs to be there. I think we're near enough got it set up now, and this took quite some while, and these are all the pieces you need for a four-player game. For an eight-player game, I've put out half the number of pieces you need. <laughs> And as you can see already, this table is groaning under the weight of all this plastic and somewhat pushed for space. Each player has uh, his buildings and his, his uh, beasties that he can summon and his own little playboard here with the rules that are specific to him. And then he's got these things uh, called hero quests and gifts which is uh, ready to deploy, and so that takes up a fair bit more um, table space. So I don't think we could actually get an eight-player game, even on this really quite large table. Uh, but what an epic board. Look at the size of that with really big spaces, and you need big spaces if you're going to have uh, battles between big pieces like this. Uh, the game has uh, a track on each player's board, which uh, keeps track of how many power points he has. You've got a little marker that uh, slides up and down. Personally, I, I think a pegboard might be nice because these can be uh, a, a little bit skiddy. But anyway, you, just, you decide what you're going to do with your power. And if it's your turn, you say, I'm going to do a thing. And you can, for instance, with a, a point of power, you can build a... Um, you can, well, I'll make it this guy. You can, you can use a point and you can build a shrine somewhere. And then, when, once you've got a shrine in the next turn, you can use some more power to uh, summon some uh, worshippers who then can fight for you next to that shrine. Because this is a fantasy world, you see. Uh, this is the world of Glorantha, which has quite a, a fan following around the world. And um, 
Uh, I'll explain later why Yelm, the god of the sun, is in hell. The rule book doesn't tell you. It leaves you to guess or leads you to be a Glorantha fan and just somehow know. Um, so in your turn, uh, you do a thing, and then the next person does a thing using up more power, then the next person does a thing using up more power, and you keep going round until when you're out of power, you say, I'm out of power, and then the next person who has some power left, and you keep going until everyone's out of power, and you just do stuff. So your actions are actually fairly simple. With, with power, you can build a building, upgrade a building to a better building, you can summon a creature, you can move creatures, and you can, if you're in a space with some other rival creature, you can initiate a battle. And that's about it, really. And then you roll some dice, and uh, one of you loses. Now, if Spock were playing this on the Starship Enterprise, it'd be more 3D, because the underworld, which is here, is, uh, is underneath Glorantha, uh, the, the, the surface world. And then you've got the heavens and the moons, which is, which is this board. Uh, and you can imagine that that's hovering up here somewhere. And if you've got a piece that's uh, uh, here on the edge of the board, you can see here it says to and from the Sky Dome. You can climb up the Sky Dome up to the heavens, which puts you there. Or possibly you can go down into hell. Darkness can get to hell by going to one of the darkness temples. And uh, so you go to a dark temple and then down into hell. Or you can possibly uh, go down Megaster's Pool, the great whirlpool at the centre of the world, down into hell as well. Uh, there's only one way out of hell, and that is to the Gates of Dawn, which is there. But there's a snag. Getting out of hell is really tricky. And so that's one problem that uh, Sun has right from the start of the game, because he starts with his main god in hell, which is very inconvenient. How does he get out? Well, the main uh, way to get out for him is to be given permission by one of the other players. And uh, for that to happen, he has to offer them quite a bribe in power and runes. These are runes. There's a pack of cards uh, which uh, give you nice things. Um, light. Select another player to choose whether you earn one VP, victory point, or two power. There you go. See so a little, little nice thing. And it means that you can move a thing for free, fight slightly better in a fight, that sort of thing. Runes, they're good. Do not anger the Sky God. The Sky God, ooh, he gets, ooh, yes, yes, ooh, he gets angry. As you adventure around the world of Glorantha during the God's War, you play one of the main factions. Uh, one of them is, for instance, Storm. This is the Storm God, Orlanth. And you can see he's got lightning bolts coming from him, and he's made out of clouds. And, uh, and uh, others are, for instance, the, the Emperor of the Sun, and Yelm, the Sun God, or, or the Red Moon Goddess, or uh, th these are in the expansion packs. You've got the, uh, the sea expansion with the, the dark blue... The... Matt, wait, it's not that cold in here, come on. Um, so, are you going to, uh, you're going to join in, uh, then? Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about, I was just thinking about getting this, actually. Is, is, it, is it good? Yeah. Cool. Oh, right. Uh, so, uh, you know the rules? Uh, no, but I, I'm familiar with the world of Glorantha. You're familiar with the world of Glorantha? Absolutely. Oh, wow. So, what's the best thing about the world of Glorantha? Oh, ducks. Ducks! Matt, you're going to have to brace yourself for disappointment. In the basic game, in the basic game, in the basic game, there are no ducks. What? There are no ducks in the basic game. You have to get one of the expansions. I know. If you're a Glorantha fan, you may think, right, okay, brilliant. A game finally about ducks. This is what we want. But no, in this incredible, fantastic world with, with gods, but no ducks. I feel like I've got a hot flush. There's no ducks. Well, I, I, I did a major oversight. I mean, there's all this water as well. Look at all that. Half where, the board is water. Where no the, ducks. Where are all of the cows and the horses and, and things like that? Um, mainly they concentrate on, on giant gods beating each other up. And oh. they imagine that the horses and so forth just are doing the grazing and so forth. And they sort of cancel each other out. You see, this is familiar to me because we reviewed a game called Cthulhu Wars. Not very long. Ah. Right. Yes, which is actually very, very similar to True. this game, right? But that frames on tentacle things in the end of the world, whereas this is built based in the world of Glorantha, which I'm familiar of from a PC slash iPad game slash phone. A, a PC slash iPad game slash phone? Yeah, slash phone. Wow. Uh, but although I wouldn't play it on a phone, it'd be very fiddly, called King of Dragon Pass. Ah, I've heard much of which King I, of Dragon Pass. Which, as a Glorantha nut, I'm amazed you haven't tried or played. You're yeah. not really a PC slash phone slash tablet kind of man. Too maybe. many slashes. Too many slashes. Well, you can just pick one. Uh, anyway, it's a game in which yeah. you, it's very, very 
bitty game of resource management and jaunty music of you having to collect cows. The jaunty music sounds good, but do you want this bitty resource management? You're not selling it to me. <laughs> well, the wonderful thing about it, for me, yes. is that it has all the gods and stuff from Glorantha, but uh-huh. not as the main part of the story in this. They're kind of in the background and you have to offer prayers to them and things and they might do what you want, but usually they don't. Yeah, but that's set, set way in the future. This is back in the time of the God's War. Back in the Yelm, old times. the sun god. He's in he, hell, I hear. He starts in hell because he's just been slain by Orlanth, who, as you know, used Death, the first sword, whom he borrowed off Humak, Humak to kill the god that later became known as Grandfather Mortal, the first being to die. Do keep up. And so that's why he's down in hell and the Lightbringers have to go down there to rescue him. And then you've got the spire that smashes open to make a hole into to hell. And yeah, well, the chaos rift, there's a chaos rift. Um, <laughs> and uh, actually, maybe we should talk about the chaos rift. So this incredibly two-dimensional spike. This flat disc here, yes. It's called the spike. Called the spike, which is game the most 3D <laughs> thing imaginable. <laughs> in a game that is comedically 3D in every other regard. Yes. Uh, the spike is going to shatter. It's going to shatter because chaos comes into the world. Order, as represented by the spike, the rune, as you know, is, is, for order is, is a, a triangle, will shatter. And the chaos rift, the chaos rift for open, anything that was on the spike dies, and then the chaos rift starts sucking in all sorts of things from around it and and all these things will be destroyed unless the players close the chaos rift through an act of cooperation in which they they choose secretly an amount of power to sacrifice to 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 the the closing of the chaos rift but chaos player he then chooses another secret amount probably more than that in order to try to keep it open and as long as it's open chaos grows stronger getting more and more runes and power and everyone else gets sucked into the abyss more and more things being sucked in it's just awful and then eventually when they close it Megaster's pool appears and as you can see here is a gateway down into hell a giant whirlpool at the center of the world Megaster Megaster so as with Cthulhu Wars this is a game that Looking at it on the table appears to be dauntingly complicated. So many little complicated things, everything's got its own little rule here, there's a rule on that, there's a rule on that, and there's a list of rules here. But it's actually very simple, right? Yes, actually, I would say that it is genuinely pretty streamlined, and that after a quick um, five minute explanation, you can just sort of start, and most people have just got the rules that reply to them in front of them, and they can uh, focus on those, and after a short while, they get it. And most of these rules don't apply at the start of the game, because all these special powers, for instance, you don't have at the start of the game anyway. You have to do hero quests in order to earn them, and then you just have to absorb them one at a time. Yes. Odd and texty as it is, is something slightly refreshing about the fact that, yes, you have got a game with a manual that's this big, but it doesn't need to be. And then when you get into it, there's an awful lot of text in front of you, but it's literally everything you need to know. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but I would say, and, and I've often, I've been campaigning, campa- yes, campaigning, uh, that all board games should have a one-page summary of the rules. And indeed, if a board game cannot be summarised on one side of one sheet of paper, then it's too flipping complicated. Put it in the bin. Yeah, and uh, this is my own summary, which, as you can see, is on one side of one sheet of paper. Sorry, was I blocking you there? Oh, no, it's fine. Um, and uh, this will be uploaded to Board Game Geek. There is, however, talk of putting uh, possibly even my one-page summary in the reprint, uh, which is uh, uh, all even now being kick-started for. I would happily see this changed into that. Yes, yeah, you stick, I, I've played games where I've just put this one sheet of paper in front of people and they've just had a quick look at it and go, okay, yeah, got it, and, and then you're off. So, in your turn, you just spend some power, and there are only three things you can do. Build or upgrade a building, mm-hmm. summon a creature, mm-hmm. move a creature, okay, four things, there are four things you can do. Okay. And uh, the fourth thing is start oh, a battle. Start a so, fight. Yeah, so you could move into some area with lots of other people like that, and then uh, that doesn't actually automatically start a fight. You could peacefully coexist. No, 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 we just were on holiday, oh, you could say. Why can't a spider and You've just a broken my spider. Tra- I didn't break a spider. Yes, you did. It's a rumour. Uh, I, I can neither confirm nor deny the breakage of the spider. You've just done it twice now. I didn't break the Stop spider. breaking my spider. Ah! Please stop breaking my spider. Um, we've got a dragon and a spider. Yes. Um, and why can't they get on? Well, they could. They could peacefully coexist until someone spends a PowerPoint to initiate a, 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 a biffage. A biffage. 
Uh, and then Biffages in this game are just rolling dice, right? Yeah, the reason but that's not reason a bad thing. That's good. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just d6s. Roll the d6s depending on on how much uh, uh, how many biffers you've got in there. Uh, you roll a six, you've done a kill. One, two, three. Pff, ignore that. No effect. Threes and fours are funny. They cause they cause routes. Routes. And slightly weirdly, the person uh, doing the routing decides where you go. I don't think that's weird. It's where you want to chase someone off to. Okay, so uh, you, you chase. Know, <laughs> have, I, have I got that right? Hang on. I'm gonna check. Surely. I shall check my own rule summary. To, uh, 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 I mean, either way makes sense. It's either you decide where you run away to, or it's someone else decides where they're going. It's in the rules. It's in the rules. Right. So I'm gonna, we're going to route this massive dragon into the Banthe Ocean. Yes, you can, we, we couldn't have discussions about how exactly to, to pronounce all these, these... How do we pronounce this one? Brown Sea. Bra Is that correct? Br I, I say Broen. Broen! If you, want, if you want to go brown, <laughs> brown, that's fine. And you can even route people up to the moon from certain places. Of course. And of course, uh, let's not forget that this is a Bronze Age civilization. Right. And so you need a bronze... Ah. Oh, sorry, I suppose it is a bit stabby, isn't it? But this is bronze, you see, and there's something, there's something more... Some more magical about Bronze Age world. It, it's longer ago. It makes me think of the Trojan Wars and so forth. You know, when when gods still walked the earth and and everything was made out of wood apart from the things that were bronze and cost a penny. These days, of course, gods are kind of mostly hoisted up on a on a pile of silly string and squirty cream. Are they? Hmm. No, I don't think they are. Really? Absolutely. They're lightning bolts. Now, on this board, we have these very pretty 3D buildings, which I think, I think you'll agree are pretty, pretty nice. And here's a shrine, you see, which I can upgrade to a temple that looks like that. Also very nice. Here we have a ziggurat, and doesn't that look nice? These are eye-wateringly expensive and possibly unnecessary, but I bought them because, well, damn it, they're pretty. But actually, the basic game comes with flat counters like this. So this is a temple in the basic game. Um, and there is a practical advantage of these flat counters, uh, and I think I can probably demonstrate uh, what, why that is the case. Uh, so here, for instance, is the Castle of Lead, and there it is in the Brown Sea, and this could happen. I'm going to attack the Castle of, of Lead with my archer. Oh, well, wait a minute. Ha, your archer, uh, I'll see him off with my dark troll. Well, that's not going to be a problem for my phoenix. Ha, phoenix be damned, I have the Kraken. <laughs> Kraken, crack off, this is a uh, dragon with a chair. A dragon with a chair? I have Kaiga Lytor, the mother of trolls. It's the Behemoth, he's big and he's green. Ah, did you, a Behemoth, ha! I have the Leviathan, and as everyone knows, Leviathans are bigger than Behemoths. Leviathans are just fake dragons. There's a real dragon and it's red. Ha, but I have the mother of all monsters. Go on, go on, have him. Well, oh, forget about it, it's Gennert. He's oh, it's big. He's uh, very tall. Well, in that case, I summoned the hero, Denethor, on his mighty steed, Smorgasbord. Fine. Well, here's my friend, David. He's a robot. I think we got a, a little bit carried So, away. Matt, from the channel Shut Up and Sit Down, a professional games reviewer, what yes. do you think? Well, I mean, I, I, it's, a, it's a big... I think it's a very fair summary, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Uh, Lindy's kindly had me along today because I'm a bit of a board game expert and this thing, uh, much like its sort of sibling in the board game realm, mm -hmm. Cthulhu Wars, is something that is wonderful and de defies all convention and rapper. I mean, what do you think? You're, you are the big Glorantha nut. You are the uh. one who has played this a bunch. I have come along as a spectator, almost, to this wonderful myriad of plastic nonsense. Myriad, good word. It's a great one, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, one of a selection. Uh, what do you think? Because you've got. I, I love this game. I think it's every game I've had has been good, and several have been just epic. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very well balanced. Even though we've all got different powers, we've all got different problems as well to solve, and uh, they've balanced it so such that everyone stands a very good chance of winning. Um, and there are several catch-up mechanisms, like the Great Compromise, which happens towards the end. And essentially, um, whoever manages to become the judge of the Great Compromise will give himself a load of points and then take a load of points off whoever's in the lead. And so everyone sort of ends up fairly neck and neck towards the end. So it brings the tension back. And that, that, that sort of thing happens a few times in the game. Yeah. Um, great Compromises are just something that we can all relate to. I'm allowed to walk, but I have to make room for it in the cupboard. So, I mean, I think what's wonderful about this, though, really, yes. is it's one of those games whereby all of the rules are on your board, but mm -hmm. at the same time, 
everyone, you don't know what's on all the other layers' boards, but in a way that's exciting because it means that everybody gets to do the moments of going, aha, well, I'm doing this, and everyone has mad cool powers they can trust. Yeah, and so everyone, when I get this, I, I for instance, uh, I, I produce, th oh, that's not a very interesting one. Uh, <laughs> uh, I can select any unit on, on the map belonging to any empire and relocate that unit to the sun god's area. So if I'm the sun god, that's this fella, I can, I can summon anything for you're now with me, sunshine. <laughs> I and love that, that is, it's called, the name of that power is Call to Justice. Yes. Which is wonderful. And, and does actually have to be said in that voice as well. Call to Justice. Call to justice. Oh, well, so, here's the kicker, though. You, oh. you kind of got sent a copy of this game by the people who make the game. Yes. But you bought all of the expansions. I got carried away. I thought, this is such a good game. Just I must boxes. have all the expansions. Because you've got, you have got. The yes. God's War Dragons. I've got God's War Dragons. The God's War Cosmic Monsters. Cosmic Monsters. You've got Chaos Monsters. Well, that's a Chaos Monster, yeah. yeah. And then you've also got... Yes. Oh, I feel like I might drown in these boxes. You've got yeah. the Elder Races. Elder Races, they're good. Ducks, if you want ducks. Ducks. Who doesn't want ducks? And then uh, also the God's War Empires. Empires, yes, which gives you the extra uh, empires like C, which is Megasta, and, 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 and Genert, and Pamalt. Uh, of the Earth, and, and they come with all the, the, the Earth Mothers who can marry all the other uh, players, which is quite funny. Um, but, but, and yes, it's a lot. But it is a lot. It's yes. a lot. So what's the deal? Uh, what do you reckon? If I'm somebody who just likes Glorantha, right. likes massive things, which of these is, is, which of these is good? Which of these is the ones to get? The core game, the core game is great. Uh, if you get the empires, you get four more factions like Earth and Invisible God and the Red Moon and so forth. So you have another lot of problems, another lot of uh, hero quests to do and powers to get and so forth. And it expands it to eight players. However, I wouldn't get it for the expanding it to eight players. I would get it for being able to play more empires. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I've never played this game with eight. But the thought of playing it with eight, I do not find attractive. Too slow? Too long? It, too long, too big, too just too much of everything, really. Mm. Um, I think uh, four players is, is good. It's a nice sweet spot around four. And have you found that you've played with all of these different gods that you're getting that enough that you think, yeah, yeah. Empires, yeah, I think you could, you could with lots of playings of the game, but with the uh, cosmic monsters and the dragons and so forth, yeah, if, if you've got a, a seasoned load of, of, of players who've played this game loads of times and they want something extra to add even more to it, then right. yeah, maybe you'd put in one dragon. Mm -hmm. But even the rules writers themselves the say, dragon. say, it's not very little, um, <laughs> and this is actually to scale with the map, it's not a small dragon. Um, the, uh, it, but even they say, don't put all three dragons in, that's too much. And all the cosmic <laughs> monsters and all the chaos monsters, it, uh, it, it would just, it, more complications and longer game. And I think actually, since most of the time, you're not playing with seasoned players, you're playing with a few people who have played it before perhaps, and a few who have to be broken in gently. If you throw every cosmic monster at with all its special abilities at them, they're just going to be overwhelmed. So you end up with these guys. I mean, great figures, look at that! Yeah. Oh, frothing yeah. figure! But yeah. um, I think they're going to end up mostly sitting on your shelf. So as a man who really does just like to know what... what I like to really boil it down to like, here's the game. Boil it down. Boil this it is down, what you man. need, this is what you don't. Right. Would you say that any of the expansions fit into the zone of being like, you know what, you've got to have that one? Or is it just enough? Is the base game enough? The base game is enough. You, it doesn't need expanding. Uh, if you're really into it, get Empires, because then you get more Empires to play with. Uh, and then, otherwise, if you're really rich, uh, or, or have a collector's mentality, <laughs> then maybe go, go for the others. Cool, that's all I need to know. My information desires are sated. If you do get as carried away as I did, then you may end up having to take public transport if you've not got a car, because you can't get everything on a bike. Obviously, you know, you do not get these things in the base game. That's not, they're not in the game. This was just a stupid no, joke. It, it, yeah, okay. The, we yeah. just, we were just, we got carried away with that and they're not, these are not models. So you've got a horseman. Right. Yes. Full full disclosure. Um, they don't belong. Yeah. And this but, is a this is a robot uh, character. That it's a it's a it's a kind of statue of a robot. That. Uh... Get into your pod. 
Ducks! Ducks! You need ducks! Glorantha isn't Glorantha without ducks! Perhaps I should admit a certain level of bias in this review. You see, I have been steeped, oh yes, steeped, I don't think that's too extreme a term, uh, in the world of Glorantha since I was in my teens. You see, there was a role-play game called RuneQuest, and I created characters and I adventured in this world, and in my mind I was there, and so this world became so much more real to me as a, as a result. And so when I uh, created an Orlanth adventurous worshipper, I wasn't just uh, a member of the Storm God cult, I was a member of Orlanth's cult. This is Orlanth here, you see, he's got clouds and lightning bolts coming out of him. And um, he's, he's much more of a, a, a figure of my imagination than just the normal playing piece. But I want you to know that this game, which doesn't go on for too long by the way, does work as a tactical game. Uh, choosing where to put your pieces is a proper difficult choice and, and when to gang up on certain players and so forth, all that good stuff, uh, all that works as a game. It's not one of those uh, games that's just completely up its own fundament with the, the theme. For instance, I don't like the game Arkham Horror. If you just uh, reduce that uh, board to just a series of nodes and all the various tasks you have to just a number, it wouldn't work as a game at all. It'd be utterly dull. It's only the theme which uh, makes that a, an appealing game, whereas this has got proper mechanics it's a proper game. Um, and I was tremendously uh, uh, thrilled last year to get to interview um, Sandy Peterson, who was one, one of the developers of RuneQuest. And, and I had imagined that I would then go on to, to interview other people, possibly even Greg Stafford, who very sadly died a few weeks later. And, and so I never will get to talk to him now, but I do nonetheless still get to roam around uh, his fantastic magic rich world uh, in, in my mind. And um, when I was 14, I made a film called Prax Warrior starring this chap uh, when his helmet was in a better state of repair. And you can see it uh, on, on, the, uh, on my channel. A link is now appearing on your screen. And um, so there you go. I've, I've been in this world for a long time. It means something uh, a lot to me, but you don't have to be steeped in Glorantha to enjoy the game because it actually works as a good game with some really cool figures. Right, I suppose, uh, yeah, it's probably time, isn't it? Okay. Come on. Come on. Dimash!